Hi there, I'm Christopher Harrison. I'm a senior program manager inside of Microsoft Cloud and AI. And what I wanna do over the next few minutes here is take a look at one of my uh, favorite little uh, cognitive services or AI services from Microsoft called Text Translator. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to explore what this is and then walk through the quick start to see how we can get this up and running on our own. So what Text Translator or Translator will do for us is it will take text and it will translate it out to different languages. And you're gonna notice that there's actually a whole host of different languages that it will be able to translate into. And you're also gonna notice the fact that you can use really whatever programming language it is that you want to go ahead and write the code. And so I'm gonna use Python. I'm a big fan of Python. And I'm going to get into the docs and look at the quick start. So Inside of uh, the uh, Cognitive Services page, I'm gonna click on uh, Documentation here, and you're gonna notice that there's a quick start right here in the middle. And if I click on this quick start, and I just scroll down a little bit, and let's just make sure that we choose Python, you'll notice that it gives me the basic setup steps here. So number one is to create a new project in my favorite IDE or editor. So in my case, that's going to be Visual Studio Code in an empty folder. I've already done that, so check there. Number two is to copy the code, which we'll do in a couple of minutes. Number three is to set our subscription key. And then number four is to go ahead and run the program. Now, the one thing that we haven't yet done is set up this subscription key. So let's see how this is done. So if we look up here at the prerequisites, we'll notice that we need an Azure subscription, which we can go ahead and, uh, and create. And then we'll need to go ahead and set up our uh, translation service. And so you'll notice that if I go over here to the portal and I choose create a resource, from here, I can now create that translation. Oops. There we go, that translator key here. So just type in translator, type in the right value, choose that, and now it's gonna say, all right, well, go ahead and create this. So let me hit create here. It's going to uh, ask me for the subscription that I want and a resource group, and I'm just gonna create a brand new one. We'll call it Python Demo. And if you're not familiar with uh, resource groups, this is basically just a group of, uh, of resources. So I'll set that. I'll choose my region. So I'm gonna choose West US here because that's close to me. So we'll just set that close to me. And then on my resource region, we'll do the exact same thing, West US. We'll give this a name of Python demo. And then on the pricing tier, whoops, looks like that's already taken uh, Python demo two. There we go. Um, and then over here on the uh, pricing tier, you are gonna notice that I've got free, which will give me up to 2 million characters translated per month. So that will actually work just fine. Let me go ahead and hit that. And then I'll hit review and create and just hit create here. Cool. And so now this is just going to take a moment. It's gonna create that service that I can now use. And then eventually it's going to give me back a key. So you'll notice that this is all done. I've got a little button right here that says go to resource that I'm gonna click on. And you'll notice, by the way, that it links out to uh, some quick start here. Uh, if I wanted to go ahead and, uh, and follow that, which I've already done, but the big thing, if we remember back to what we were reading, is the key here. So let me click copy to go ahead and copy my, uh, my key. I'm going to also grab my endpoint here and grab my location. So I'm just grabbing all three of those. And you could go ahead and say paste those into uh, just say notepad to go ahead and have for later. So that's my location that, whoops, here we go. 
There we go. That's my endpoint. And then uh, let's go ahead and grab one of the keys. Doesn't matter which one. We'll just grab key two. Okay, so those are the three pieces of information that uh, that we're going to need here, which are called out in the quick start. So now I've got my subscription key. Now let's go ahead and grab the code. So I'm just going to scroll down. Here's the code right here. Let me copy that. And then let's go ahead and paste this into my code. So I'm going to call it translate.py. And oops, uh, let's go ahead and yeah, let's install the Python extension there. There we go. And now let's paste in the uh, paste in the Python code. Oh, stay there. There we go. All right. So now, what we're gonna notice is it's gonna look for our subscription key. So let's go ahead and grab that. We had a notepad, that looks good. The uh, endpoint already inside the sample and then our resource location, uh, we want that, that's West US 2. And let's go ahead and, uh, and paste that in. And so now let's take a look at the code here. So the code is going to use a little library here that, uh, that we're gonna need called request. So we've got our, our little request library here. And then uh, we've got the, uh, uh, an ID generator here and a little bit of JSON. So our subscription key is what's gonna allow us to make calls. Our endpoint is what we're gonna call out into. And then we've got our location of West US 2. Now we're gonna generate a path that we're gonna call. And so we need to indicate that we are gonna make a translation call. We're using version three of the API. We're gonna go from English and then into German and Italian. And so we put that path together like that. Then we set up a couple of pieces of header information that we're gonna send up to the server, which is basically just us saying, hey, we're allowed to make this call. So that's our subscription key, the location, so that way we know which server we should be talking to, the content type that's gonna come back, which is gonna be JSON, and then it just needs something as an ID. So we're just gonna generate a random uh, unique identifier. This is gonna be the text that we're now going to translate. So it will translate out hello world. And now we're going to send this up by using requests here. So our post, We'll then go ahead and post that out by using our URL, our parameters, our headers, and then eventually that JSON body, which is going to contain the text that we're gonna translate. And then finally, we're gonna print this out onto the screen. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and run this. So I'll say uh, Python3 translate.py, hit enter. And voila, if we look at the output here, our hello world translates into German and into Italian. And if we wanted to maybe change the text, we could go ahead and do that. So maybe I change this to good morning. If I wanted to maybe change the languages, maybe I want to add in, say, Japanese, I could do that here. Hit save. And then now... I could go ahead and run this one more time. We'll just hit our upper arrow here and hit enter. And now it's translated good morning into German, Italian, and Japanese. And so that's how, with just a handful of lines of code, we could go ahead and set up translation. Now, one very important thing that I want to mention, and it is also called out inside of the documentation as well, is that we do want to make sure that we export out the key here to somewhere else. So we don't want to use hard-coded keys for production, but for my little demo here, it's going to work out uh, just fine. But that is how we can use the translation service and Python to create our translations.